Let's give a hand clap to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before the preacher man will take over this morning to bless us, we will lift a prayer unto our Papa. Uh, our Papa will be ministering his last ministration in the U.S. this morning. And uh, singers, the temples will help us. We are going to lift a prayer. This is the last push for our papa to break through and come back with a good report. So shall we be on our feet and let's lift up a prayer. In the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1, the first verse, this is a prayer request from the Apostle Paul. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse Number one, it said, finally, brethren, pray for us that the word may have free course, the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as 
it is with you. That is a prayer for me. That the word of God may have a free course and be glorified as it is with you. We are praying that this, mo this morning, that is this, af this afternoon, the ministration of our dad, our father, may have free course in the life of the people. That there will be a massive impact. That there will be a revival. It is a last push for the great missionary to come back to us. He called me and said, Apostle, I feel, I feel homesick of my people. But tell them to pray for me. Hallelujah. We are lifting our voice now and pray for him. Let's begin to pray. Lord, remember your servant. Let your word touch his lips and let it be of a coal of fire that will minister to the life of your people in the U.S. in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever, Lord, that your servant prepared by your word to give unto your people, let it reform them. Let it be transformation. Let it be an impartation. Let it be a touch. Let it be a healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, remember your servant. Let your power rest upon him. Let your power manifest your glory in the church in the U.S. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your word, Lord, let it have free course. Let it break every chain. Let it remove every barrier in the name of Jesus. As your stand, servant, stand to minister. Oh, Lord, let your glory overshadow everyone in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Precious Father, we thank you for your word unto your servant, to the entire church in the U.S. And also your word to your servant that is coming to minister to us. Lord, remember them. Let your word of cold fire touch their lips and give them the utterance. Give your servant the power to impart that the transformation and glory, we say, Lord, take it. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a wave of rain in this house. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are worthy. Thank you, Lord, for victory. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
noche na pochises oti Let's put our hands together for temples. Very powerful this morning. Hallelujah. Wow. God bless all of you for being here this morning. It's going to be a powerful morning. And I believe that God... Is going to speak to all of us. Amen. Shall we take our seats? Uh, this morning we have Dr. Alex Angsong ministering to us. Amen. He's a man of the word. Praise God. Amen. And I call him great theologian. Amen. He is a great theologian. And this morning we are fortunate to have him to minister to us. And we want to put our hands together as we invite him. Reverend Dr. Alex Anson to the pulpit. Let's put our hands together for him.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning to you all. Let's share a brief word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you praise and we give you adoration. We thank you for the gathering of your people. This gathering is unto you alone. And we know that when we come before you, we will not leave the same, but you will impart to us a blessing. We give you praise and we give you adoration. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. You may please take your seats. I want to salute all the pastors, Apostle Na, uh, Dr. Achampo, all the pastoral board team. Oh, let's put our hands together for them. For a lot of times, um, there's a lot of work, not a lot of times, actually there's a lot of work that go on behind the scenes and sometimes there are people who are anonymous, you don't see them, but they are doing marvelous work for the, for the work of the kingdom. Um, speaking on the topic, laborers in God's vineyard, laborers in God's vineyard. But before I go into the message for today, I just want to share a brief word of encouragement to you. I think we all know that we are going through some difficult times globally and also Nationally, at the national level, we are going through um, some, you know, serious uh, um, economic hardships. And I, 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 when we were doing praise and worship, when we were singing, Jesus, you are my firm foundation, I thought that it was so appropriate for us to sing that song because you must have a living hope. And that hope must be in Jesus, who is your firm foundation. If the economy is your firm foundation, then when the economy shifts, you will shift. But if Jesus is your firm foundation, independent of the shaking, you will stand. Because you are standing on that firm foundation that is Jesus Christ. I want to share just two scriptures before we go into today's uh, message. Genesis chapter 26, uh, 12 to 14. Then Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. I pray that in this time of shaking, there will be positive enviness concerning the prosperity that God is bringing your way. Amen. But the Bible says that before this, uh, um, the scripture that I just read, there was famine in the land. In the time of Abraham, there was famine. He traveled out. In the time of Jacob, there was no famine, but there was a threat to his life. And so he also went out. But in the time of Isaac, the Bible says that God told him, stay, don't go. And God showed him how to prosper in the midst of the famine. And it's my prayer that in the midst of the famine all around us, God will show you something to put your hand to, to transform your life. If we look at 1 Corinthians 12, 7, it says that the, by the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. I have come to a very firm understanding that no breakthrough comes to you without the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that, you know, as, as, as we believe, as we confess 
the Holy Spirit is the medium through which God brings us everything that we need. And the manifestation of that spirit is for your profit. And so sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you some business to put your hand into. As the Holy Spirit instructed Isaac, he can instruct you in the midst of the famine, he can instruct you to do something new. And so don't get, uh, you know, despair. Because... If you rely on the word of God and you rely on the leading of the Holy Spirit, you'll be like Isaac. You'll begin to prosper and you'll prosper and people will see you and they say that you don't have any contacts in government. You don't have any contacts anywhere, but you have the Holy Spirit and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in your life will bring a turn around to every situation. Amen. So this is just the short word of exhortation that I want to give us before we enter into today's message. Let's look at the book of Matthew. So we're talking on the topic laborers in God's vineyard. Let's look at the book of Matthew chapter 9. Verses 35 to 38. Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to 38. Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to 38. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes... He was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Amen. Amen. The harvest truly is plentiful. But the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send more laborers into his harvest. It is interesting to uh, observe that of the prayer topics that Jesus himself asked his disciples to pray about, he didn't ask them to pray for financial resources to fund the work of the mission, but rather he prayed for laborers to fund the work, to, to, to do the work of the ministry. You see, because it takes even laborers to give their finances for the work of the, uh, of the ministry. Amen. And sometimes you can even have laborers without the finances, and yet the work will be done. Now, a lot of times we talk about in our generation, and it is a fact that if we want the work of the kingdom to stand, we need to finance the work of the kingdom. And there's no doubt about that. When uh, we are sending missions out, missionaries out, and I'm talking on this topic because we are in the mission month. For a couple of uh, months, we will be doing, we'll, the focus will be on mission work. And that is why our own general overseer is on mission out of the country. So, we are talking about the work of the ministry. But with all the financial resources that we have in the 21st century, the first century church did not have the kind of financial resources that we have in the 21st century. And yet they turned their world upside down. And the difference was that the prayer of Jesus was answered. People like Paul, laborers like Paul, were brought into the fold. And they were able to do the work of the ministry. And so when God calls us, he has called us for a purpose. The most important resource... 
that we can contribute to the work of the kingdom is our labor. The, let me repeat it again. The most important resource that we can contribute. God has already contributed his Holy Spirit. He has contributed Jesus Christ to come and die on the cross. The most important resource that we who have responded to the grace of God, the most important resource that we can contribute is our labor. Labor requires hard work. It requires people who are willing to train themselves in order to be effective in the work of the ministry. If you are really, if you really want to be a laborer who is sought out in the market, you train yourself. You go to school. You pay a lot of money to acquire certain skills. And when you finish and you put all these skills on your CV, all you are trying to tell people is that I have trained myself to be an effective laborer in the house of God, in, in the world. In the same vein, in the kingdom, we need to equip ourselves. We need to train ourselves to be effective laborers in the vineyard, in the, in, the, in the kingdom of God. You need to train yourself, you know, learn about, the, read about the word, prepare yourself. The Bible, Paul said that, you was, was admonishing Timothy that you should be a workman who, who is not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I remember when I got born again, I went to preach to somebody. And that person used to be a believer who had backslidden and had become a Rastafarian. And so did not believe in Jesus any longer. He believed that Haley Selassie is the Messiah who is to come. And this was somebody who was ablaze for the Lord, doing dawn broadcasting. It's not just a mere Christian, no. Somebody who was ablaze and he had fallen so low but because he was ablaze for the Lord he knew the scriptures he could quote more scriptures than I could and so I went to preach to him and he beat me up with scriptures left and right and I couldn't answer and I left ashamed because I, was, I had not equipped myself to be effective. And so as laborers, we need to equip ourselves to be effective in the work of the ministry. And God has called all of us as laborers. There is no kin in the house of God. We are all laborers in the vineyard of the Lord. I want us to look at the book of Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 to 16. Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 to 16. Matthew chapter 20, from verse 1 to 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. Again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour. And did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They said unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So 
when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. And when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. And they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These last have wrought but an hour, and thou had made them equal unto us, which have borne the bedding and heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. This not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that, thy, take that thine is, and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil, because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. Amen. Amen. Many are called, few are chosen. A lot of times we, we, we cite this from the Bible, but the few that are chosen are the laborers. Many want to come into the kingdom, but very few actually want to be laborers in the kingdom. So this passage of scripture that we've just read is, is a parable that Jesus shared. And Jesus used a lot of parables to teach heavenly or to teach uh, um, lessons about the kingdom. The kingdom sometimes may look overly spiritual to his hearers. And so he was using things that they could relate to. Things that happen on a daily basis in their lives. He was using them, these things, as examples of how the kingdom is supposed to work. And this example, there are certain specific examples that Jesus used. The Lord and the laborer. We have all been called into the kingdom, as I stated in the beginning. We have all been called as, a, as laborers in God's vineyard. So it is not enough for us to be born again. We must ask ourselves, what labor are we laboring in the house of God? What, labor, what is our labor, what is the contribution of our labor to the kingdom of God? And there is no distinction here with respect to age or with respect to social status. Each and every one of us has been called as laborers. When I got born again as a teenager, I was in secondary school. One of the things that I understood about the gospel was that we have been called to preach the gospel. And I remember myself and um, we were secondary, we were in secondary school, myself and my junior brother, we went to speak to this man. I don't know why we knocked on his door. We, we were teenagers and this man was in his 50s or 60s thereabouts. So we went to knock on his door and we, we told him that we want to preach the word of God uh, uh, to you. So he welcomed us, he gave us seats, we sat down and we preached the gospel to him. And when we finished preaching, he was very silent. And he said that God sent you to come and, and speak to me because I was going to kill myself. And he showed us a, a black rubber bag that there was poison in that bag. And not only was he going to kill himself, he confessed to us. Not only was he going to kill himself, he was going to kill his entire family. There was some dispute over property and he thought that 
the, the other family members wanted to sideline him. So if he was not going to get the property, nobody would get it. And so he had planned a mass suicide, kill himself, poison the water source. And he, he confessed all these things to us. He was going to poison the water that they all drank from. He would drink the water. They will also drink the water and they will all die. And that day when we walked into his house with the, work, with the word of God, there was a transformation. And we went with him. He told us, uh, let, let's go with him. And he went to throw away the poison. We were just teenagers. And that's why I'm saying that age is not a limit to being a laborer in the house of God. It, it doesn't matter where you are, your station, it is not a limit to being a laborer in the house of God. So God, importantly, God has called us to be laborers. And that is why the, the, Jesus said that pray that God will bring laborers into his vineyard. There is so much emphasis on church growth without emphasis on laborers. So there are so many churches that are boasting of numbers and you ask yourself, how many of those people are laborers? Because God has not just called us to be born again. He has called us to work. There's a reason why when Adam was created, the first instruction was about work. To plow and to till it. The Garden of Eden, when God put him in the Garden of Eden, he was put in the Garden of Eden for a purpose, to labor. And God has called us into the new Eden, the kingdom of God, for one purpose, to labor. And as long as we are on this earth, we are laborers. If you are not a laborer, it means you want God to call you into his rest. Is it time for retirement in the kingdom of God? No. So as long as you are alive, it means that there's a certain labor that God requires of you. There is always work to be done in the house, in the kingdom of God. The, the, the parable that we just read, the Lord of the vineyard went at various times. He went the first time, there were laborers. He went the second time, there were laborers. The third time, then in the last hour, he went and there were laborers. And he asked the question, why are you standing idle? Why are you standing idle? He, Jesus may as well put this question to us today. Why are you standing idle? If you are a laborer, why are you not laboring? Why are you standing idle? And so there is always work to be done in the house of God. There is no work in the house of God that is too small or too little to require your labor to perform it. And as we prayed, when we talk about prosperity, I'm sure we are all happy about it. I encouraged us with, um, you know, the example of Isaac. He sowed in the time of drought, and there was a harvest. But the question is, what are you sowing? He sowed and there was a harvest. Yes, we must sow in our secular work, but we must also sow in the kingdom. We must sow our work in the kingdom, and if we sow our work in the kingdom, there will be a harvest. If we sow the work in the kingdom, 
there will be a harvest. Now, a lot of times there are people who think that, for instance, when we, we make a, a call for sowing uh, for the work of the ministry, sowing financially, uh, there are people who genuinely don't have the money to sow. But you have something more than your money. The money that you, don't, you think you don't have. You have something more than that. When I was a teenager and I couldn't work, and as such, anytime they called for uh, 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 pledges, I couldn't give, I was still sowing. Now I can sow financially, but back then, I didn't have the finances to sow. But I was sowing my work in the kingdom. And that is even the most important calling that God has put on our, on our lives. To sow our work into the kingdom. And that is why sometimes I get baffled by the way we treat the things of God. Because if we know that we are really sowing in the kingdom, it will determine how, what kind of seed we will sow. There was a time I used to be in this church and I, 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 I led the praise and worship team uh, in the church. But I had to go to work. Not that I had to go to work necessarily, but if I did a night shift on Saturday into Sunday, I get more pay. And so, Sunday night shift was very good financially. But Saturday to Sunday, you know, the, 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 the amount, the wages was, you know, very good. And so, Sometimes I'll take a Saturday night shift and Sunday morning I'll close from work and I have to go and lead praise and worship. And I have expended all my energy for my employer and there's nothing to give. And so I go and I go to church and I'm, I'm itchy for church to end so that I go and sleep because I just came from night shift and I've come to, uh, to work, to, to church. And then I made a covenant with God that I will never work Saturday to Sunday night shift again. So that Sunday I can come fresh and I can come and give my labor, my praise, my worship. I'm not coming to give you the surplus. After I have given everything to my employer, I'm not coming to give you the surplus. And so, even though it was financially better, I said no. So, anytime they call me, they eventually got to know why. So, Saturday, they don't call me for any shift. They, they understood that Sunday, I have to go to work. And so, I'm not going to accept any work. And in the midst of troubles, God still kept me. You know, because sometimes you are just earning a little bit extra. Just a little bit extra and you are looking at that little bit extra and you are forfeiting favor with God for that little bit extra. So, God has called us to give our labor, not the... After, after we have expended all our labor for our uh, employer, then we come and give God the surplus. It's like when the Israelites will, will keep the fat sheep and they'll come and sacrifice the lame and the blind sheep to God. And God sent a prophet and asked them, if you gave this blind and lame sheep to your governor, Will he accept it? The labor that we give God, if you gave that labor to your employer, will he sack you or he will promote you? It's a question we need to ask ourselves. The labor that you give to God, if you were giving that same labor to your employer, 
Will he promote you or will he sack you? God in his mercy will not sack you. But will, will you have earned the, 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 the grace for promotion? Now, a lot of times we think that grace is unmerited favor. And so you can behave anyhow and God will still shower his grace on you. There is a certain grace that is unmerited. You get salvation. But there is a certain promotion that you have to merit. And it comes by sowing your labor in the house of God. Now let's look at the attributes of an effective kingdom worker. What makes us effective kingdom workers? Number one, we have to be passionate about the work of God. If you are not passionate about anything, you will not do anything. You can only achieve what you are passionate about. If you are passionate about your education, you will spend time on your books. If you are passionate about a certain guy or a certain, uh, uh, you know, lady, you will empty your pocket to please the person. You are passionate about that person. Passion is the driving force for every vision. If you have a vision, but you don't have any passion for the vision, it is useless. It will remain on paper. And so God wants passionate workers, people who have put their love into what they are doing. There was a point in time in my life, I gave a pause to the music ministry. Because I was no longer passionate about it. And I told myself, if I cannot come before God and lift up my hands in passion. And worship him as I should. Then I will not give him my I will not stand in front of the people and lead them in worship. Because if I'm not passionate about it. It will transfer to the people that I'm leading. And they cannot give passionate worship to God. So, you must be passionate about the work of God. Let's look at the book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 4, 27 to 36. John, chapter 4, verse 27 to 36. And upon this came his disciples, and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, what seekest thou? Or why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that ev ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then, went, then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him ought to eat? Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Amen. Amen. My meat is to do the will of him who sent me. So the, Jesus had been traveling with his disciples. They went through a, a, a village, uh, a Samaritan village, and he spoke with this Samaritan woman, and they were, his disciples were surprised that he was even speaking to a woman because in the first century, there was a certain school of thought that... Women were not even worthy to be, to be taught the word of God. I'm not saying women are not worthy. That, that was a school of thought then among some people. And so they were surprised 
that Jesus was spending time tutoring a woman, you know, the, the, the word of God. And Jesus said that my food is to do the will of the Father. The reason that God sent me, that is, that is what I'm passionate about. That is what fills my tummy. When you are passionate about something, it overrides sometimes, it overrides uh, um, your, your, your biological uh, feelings. So you are hungry, but there's a certain passion in your heart that overrides the hunger. It's like when you are watching uh, um, football, some exciting game of football, at that moment, you don't even think about hunger or anything else. Sometimes when I'm watching football, my, my wife will be watching me because some, uh, when the ball is kicked, then I also kick my leg <laughs> as if I'm on the pitch. I have become so engrossed in the game, I'm acting out passionately what is happening on the, on the field. Now, if we can get into some of these things with all our being, there is a greater reason to be passionate about the things of God. And that's why Jesus said, uh, when he, there are certain things that Jesus did, sometimes you may even question it, like Jesus took a whip and beat people out of the, uh, out of the temple. And he said that the passion for my house has consumed me. It is passion that sent Jesus to the cross. He said that if it be your will, let this cup pass me by. But there was something that pushed him beyond the pain that he was going to encounter. And that is the passion for the work of God. And that's why in the book of Revelation as well, Jesus, uh, when Jesus appeared to uh, um, John, he, one, one of the churches, he told them that, I wish that you were either hot or cold. I don't want you to be lukewarm. I wish that you were either hot or cold. And it is time for all of us to go back to our first love, myself included. To go back to the passion that we had for the things of God. To be workers in the household of God, to be workers in the kingdom of God. Number two reason or attribute of an effective kingdom worker, you can be passionate, but your passion can be misplaced. You say that zeal, zeal without knowledge is dangerous. There are some very zealous people who have caused mayhem all around. They have their zeal, but their zeal is not well directed. And so the, the undirected zeal is also causing mayhem all around. So yes, we must be passionate about the, 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 the work of God. Jesus said that except a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. So we must be passionate, but the passion must also be directed. The passion must be for the purpose of service. We must be passionate for service. Servanthood. We must be passionate for service. Let's look at Matthew chapter 20, verse 20 to 23. Matthew chapter 20, verse 20 to 23. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshipping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism 
that I am baptized with, they said unto him, We are able. And he said unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. Continue for, uh, from 24 to 28. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Amen. Amen. So, this is another encounter we read about in the book of Matthew. Jesus uh, uh, and his disciples, and they had a certain misconception about what the kingdom of God was all about. They had read about how David established a kingdom and so they thought that Jesus had come as a military leader like David to establish a physical kingdom. So all these disciples who were following Jesus, they were not just laboring because of the sake of just labor. They had in mind certain rewards that they thought they were going to be given yeah. in the political kingdom of Jesus. In actual fact, there, there are some theologians who believe that one of the reasons why Judas betrayed Jesus was that when Jesus told him that, uh, told the, 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 the disciples that he had to be crucified on the cross, Judas lost faith in Jesus because he thought that this is somebody, a Messiah will be somebody who will lead the Israelites in a battle to break the yoke of the Romans. And so if you are saying these Romans that you are supposed to lead us against, they are going to crucify you. Why should I follow you? So he lost faith. It's not recorded in scripture, but that is what some theologians think. And it's a reasonable uh, deduction. But... The other disciples also believed that Jesus was going to be a messiah, a, a political messiah. That is why even in the book of Acts, before Jesus ascended, the last question they asked him was that, okay, we, we followed you. They didn't say it that way. Let me, let me paraphrase it and add a few words to it. <laughs> we followed you. When you said you were going to die, we didn't depart from you like uh, uh, we didn't betray you like Judas did we have waited we have seen your resurrection and now you are going to ascend into heaven what about the kingdom so he said when will you restore the kingdom to Israel that's why they asked him that question. Because even up to that time, they hadn't understood what the kingdom was about. And so they were still thinking of a political kingdom. They were still thinking that there will be a, a, a ministers in Jesus' political kingdom. They will be given positions. And so when the sons, when, when John and uh, James, the sons of Zebedee, their mother came to Jesus... And he said that, she said, let my children sit one, one on your right hand and one on your left, prime minister and deputy prime minister. They were lobbying for positions, not spiritual positions, physical positions. So it begs the question, they were labors in the kingdom but what was the motivation of their labor? And we can be laborers in the kingdom, 
But the motivation for the labor can be totally different. And so Jesus told his disciples, the kingdom that I am going to establish is not like the kingdom of the Gentiles. He says that the Lord of the Gentiles, the kings of the Gentiles, they lord it over them. But it shall not be so among you. In this kingdom, it shall not be so. In this kingdom that I am establishing, you must have a servant attitude to labor. When you come in and you are laboring, you are laboring in the music ministry. You are laboring in the ushering department. You are laboring in the prayer department. And if you don't have a labor in the house, you must be thinking as I am speaking, where can I put my labor? Because God has called you to bring a certain labor into his kingdom. And he said that the son of man himself did not come to be saved, but he came to serve. If you don't have a servant attitude, you will be disappointed in church. You will be disappointed in ministry. There are a lot of people in ministry who are jostling for positions. One of the things I determined very early in my Christian life is that I will not seek any position. I remember I used to be in this church and the, the, the one who was in, in charge of the music ministry was leaving and somebody came to tell me that uh, I should take over the music ministry. And because there was a lot of um, some divisions that had gone on, I didn't want it to seem as if I am lobbying for any position. And so I told God, I prayed, I told God, if you want me to take up this position, me, I will sit down. I'm not going to say anything to anyone. But if you really want me to do this work, let the leadership tell me to do it. And then I'll do it. So that it won't seem as if I am eager for somebody to go so that I fill the position. But the only reason why I still remained in that church, it wasn't because I was in favor of the faction that was staying and the faction that was going. I prayed and God said, stay. Stay and serve. And so I stayed and I served. That, and so at that, in that church at that point in time, if you were to ask me my opinion about the people who left and the people who stayed, my only answer would be, God told me to stay. And because God, to, God is the reason, I can fully give my labor, independent of who did what or who didn't do anything. Because God is the reason for my labor. And if you come to church and you are, you are giving your labor because of a human being, it doesn't matter how faithful that human being is. You will be disappointed. And I'm saying this not because our leaders are not to be trusted, but our leaders are human. There is a limit to which a person can fulfill your needs. There are sometimes it's not because they don't want to, but that there is not there to fulfill your needs. And so if you were following because of that person, you will be disappointed. But if you are following because of God, and you are serving because of God, I am yet to come across any testimony that God disappointed me. The, the, faithful is he who has called you, and he will fulfill it. I always say that one of the scriptures that is the foundation for everything that I do, Paul wrote, he said that, but I know whom I've believed, and I am persuaded. Nobody persuaded me. I am persuaded 
that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him against that day. And so I don't give my labor to any person. And I'm not saying that it is wrong to show faithfulness to a, a, our leaders. But if you show faithfulness to God first, it will translate to faithfulness in the human being that God has called as your leader. But if you put your faithfulness in the human being first before God, there will be problems. It doesn't matter who that person is. There will be problems. Because we are finite human beings. Our resources are finite. But we serve an infinite God and his resources are infinite. And so I would rather put my faith in that infinite source, in that infinite God, so that even if the person that he has called to lead, there is a certain limitation God will make up. The infinite source will make up for that limitation. So we have been called as servants. Come and give your service. I, a lot of times, I am grieved by, and I, I've been a, a, around for quite some time in various Christian ministries, and I've seen the lives of people who come and do work in the ministry for the sake of money. And some of them have looked at their lives, and some I'm looking at their lives. And I know where it will end, because I've seen those who came with a different motivation just to serve and how God has elevated them. And those who came for every little thing that they did, they want payment and they got their payment and yet their lives are no better. So let us come into the house of God and serve for the sake of God not for the sake of Reverend Spencer. Yes, we must show faithfulness to the vision of Reverend Spencer. But if you begin from that point, I can tell you every human institution has issues. It is not every human institution. That is why it is human. But if you, 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 you put your faith in God you can look beyond the problems that normally come with every human institution. I have seen people who have left. That is why Jesus said, blessed is he who does not take offense. He said offense will come. Even Jesus' ministry, people had offense. People, Jesus preached a message once. He had a congregation of more than 1,000. He preached one message, and the congregation dropped to 12. From 1,000 to 12. And he asked the 12, are you also going to leave? And they said, no, we can't. Peter said, we can't. Where, where, where should we go? Because you have the words of life. Why are you here? Why are you here to serve? Are you here to serve because you are serving the one who, have the, who has the words of life? Are you here to serve for position? Are you here to serve for recognition? If you have a servant attitude, you will come and just give your service to God. And the rest... Leave it to God. The one who has started that good thing in you, he'll bring it to pass. That is why Paul could come to that place. Somebody who was a lawyer and left his job and a tent maker, he left his job and went about 
preaching the word of God, whether he had money or not, whether the places where he planted the church, like the church in Corinth, whether they supported him financially or not. And people would ask, why, why are you doing this? And his response is that, I know whom I've believed and I'm persuaded that this thing that I'm doing, he's a faithful rewarder. And so in due course, he will reward me for my work. Lastly, the attributes of an effective kingdom worker is compassion. So we've looked at passion, that you must be passionate about the work. Wherever you have found yourself, God has called you to work in the kingdom. You must be passionate. Number two, you must work with a servant attitude. Serving Jesus should be your motivation. Thirdly, you must have compassion. What is compassion? Passion without compassion. Compassion is your ability to feel what others are feeling. There are people who, wicked people don't have compassion. They can't, so they can subject people to pain because they cannot put themselves in the shoes of the person who is feeling the pain. And to be an effective worker in the house of God, you must have compassion. You must be able to feel the pain of the people. Otherwise, you will be like the shepherd who just butchers the sheep and eats. And there are a lot of people like that, wolves who have turned themselves into shepherds. And they are eating the sheep. The reason they do that is that they don't have compassion for the people. And so passion, if you are passionate, but you don't have compassion, it will lead to oppression. The reason why sometimes people are passionate for political office and they get it and it turns to something else is because they don't have compassion for the people they are leading. They just have the passion to be uh, whoever, whatever position they are vying for, but they actually don't have compassion for the people that they, want, they are leading. And so passion without compassion will lead to oppression. So the most effective leaders who inspire others to follow them willingly and faithfully Show both passion and compassion. And Jesus is the best example for that. Let's look at the book of Matthew chapter 14, verse 13 to 21. Matthew chapter 14, 13 to 21. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, We have but, but, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, 
he blessed and brick and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did eat and they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained 12 baskets full. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. Amen. Amen. So we read so many miracles that Jesus performed. But what was the motivation for the miracles? And repeatedly in scripture, we see that the motivation was not fame. So that he will have his own TV channel and TV show and uh, uh, people will hail him. The motivation was compassion. So we read the, 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 the verse four, 14 uh, uh, of Ma Matthew 14 that we just read. It says, and when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude. And he was moved with compassion for them. And when he was moving with compassion for them, what did he do? He healed their sick. So the, the performance of the healing, the, the work of the healing ministry that was operating through Jesus, it came through compassion. It didn't come through a clamor for fame. Compassion. And in the, so what made him effective was because of his compassion. That is why people followed him. Because they saw the genuineness of his interest in their welfare. They saw it through the works that he did. So he multiplied loaves of bread, not because he wanted people to see that he could multiply loaves of bread. He multiplied loaves of bread because the people were hungry. They have been following him all these days, listening to his preaching. And at that point in time, they were hungry. And he needed to solve their hunger problem. And he felt what they felt. And so he performed the miracle of the multiplying of the loaves of bread. It was compassion that resulted in that miracle. Now, with us as laborers, how would compassion cause us to be effective? If you are compassionate, it will cause you to be effective because if, say, you are in the ushering department... And you know the things that must be put into place so that when the vision bearer comes and stands, the person can preach and offload everything that God has put into him for the people. It will cause you to work in a manner that is sensitive to the needs of the leader. If you are in the music ministry, the same will apply. Whatever ministry that you are in, you would have the interest of the work at heart and it will cause you to act. You will act based on compassion. You should ask yourself, if I don't contribute my labor, what does it do to the work? Reverend Spencer was telling us a couple of weeks back how, you know, a lot of ministers have become discouraged in the ministry and some are leaving because they don't get the support of the church members. And there's a simple reason for that. There's no compassion. The, the people that they are leading are not compassionate to the needs of the leader and so they come and they take and they take and they take. And when they get blessed, they go away. They just take. The reason is they don't have compassion. And so while we expect leaders to be compassionate, 
the people who are, are, are following should also be compassionate. You must be compassionate so that you, can, you, you must put yourself in the shoes of the one who is leading you. If I don't contribute my work, how does he feel? How does she feel? The discouragement that may come can all be taken away if you contributed your labor to the work of the ministry. I have a very simple message. We are in the, uh, uh, as I stated from the beginning, we are in mission week and so we are laying emphasis on things to do with the work of the mission, the work of the ministry. And God has called all of us. God has called us, endowed us with various giftings and talents for the work of the ministry. And he expects us to play our part well, with passion, with a servant attitude, and with compassion. Let's be on our feet and just pray. I want you, all of us, to rededicate our hearts to God. In whatever area you find yourself in the work of the ministry, that we will approach this work that God has given us with passion, with a servant attitude, and with compassion. Just pray that God will open you up, will cause you to be receptive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Father, we give you praise. We give you adoration. As we lay emphasis within this month and the weeks to come, the work of the mission that you've given to us, we pray that, Father, where we have become weak in our limbs, that, Lord, you will strengthen our limbs, that we'll begin to walk again, we'll begin to run again with passion and with a, an, a heart to serve and with compassion for the people that we are serving. Father, we give you praise and we give you adoration. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. This one, we are giving it to Jesus. Another one, this time to Dr. Anson for availing himself. These days, we don't hear much of the word of God in these areas, evangelism, mission, and all that. I think that this is time. Amen. And the Bible says, examine yourself whether you'll be in the faith. And sometimes if you don't examine yourself, appraise yourself, you wouldn't know whether you are falling or you are in the things of God. 
and all of us are gradually losing the passion and the compassion for the work of God. Amen. And this morning, I want you to just rise on your feet. Let's rise on our feet in the next two minutes. And sometimes the zeal is gone. The zeal to speak to somebody, to invite somebody to church is gone. But God can restore that zeal. So now the fire is going down. The zeal for the work of God is going down. The desire for the things of God is going down. Compassion. You are seeing people. You know that these people, they are heading towards hell. But there's nothing in you that is telling you, let me speak to this one. Let me bring the gospel to this one. So that at least God will touch him and deliver that person from that fire. That desire is not there. Because the fire is gone. The zeal is gone. The compassion is gone. The love is gone. The Paul says that the love of God constrained us. In other words, the love of God is compelling us. There must be a driving force. There must be some kind of fire that will drive you towards the things of God. This morning, I want you to pray. Dr. Anson has spoken about the compassion. He has spoken about the passion, the love for the ministry, for the work of God for souls, for service. You have to examine yourself whether you are somewhere there. If you are not there, you want to pray. Say, God, give us the new seal. Let the seal come back. Let the love that we have lost come back. Lord, revive us. Lord, revive us. Lord, revive your work in our life. I want you to pray this morning. Just pray. Let the Lord revive you in the name of Jesus. God should revive all of us. The Lord should revive the work. The work, the Lord should revive the spirit in us. To revive our love that we are losing. We, the Lord should revive us, give us new zeal. In the name of Jesus, the passion is going down. The desire is going down. The love of God is going down. We are praying that God should revive us. God should rekindle us. Let there be another fire, a new fire in our spirit. Just pray right now. Let's catch the fire. Let's catch the fire. Let's catch the fire. Let's catch the fire. In the name of Jesus, let the desire for the things of God come back. The Lord restore that desire. The Lord restore our love. The Lord restore our first love. In the name of Jesus. Le bazan kaya baba. Hey kapo zikia. Le bazan kaya babe. Hey kapo zakaya. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Lord, revive us, O oh God. Revive the work in the midst of your people. Lord, revive your work in the midst of your people. Lord, revive your work in the midst of your people. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, I want us to pray. Uh, yesterday was Apostle Edwin and his brother's birthday. Uh, they turned 50 yesterday. But this man of God has been a great blessing to this congregation, uh, to this ministry. is so much committed to things in this ministry. And I think that it's a time that all of us need to offer serious prayers for this man of God. You know, they are twins. They are twins, so we are praying for him and his brother. Uh, let me just look at Genesis chapter 26, verse 13 and 12. Let's do it quickly. Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26, verse 12 and 13. 
the man began to prosper. Amen. Praise God. We are praying that God will prosper them. Amen. He's talking about Isaac. Oh, let's go back. And so then Isaac saw in the land and reap in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Okay. And the man began to prosper and continue prospering until he became very prosperous. Amen. And let's say, and the man started. The man was great and continued. The man, the Bible, the old, the old King James, he said, the man was strong, amen, and continued to be strong. Praise God. We want to pray for this man of God as the 1050, that God will prosper them. That God will continue to prosper them. Amen. God will cause them to go forward. Amen. God will cause them to grow until they become great. Amen. 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 So that all the vision, the dream that God has given them, they will be able to accomplish. Let's pray for Apostle Edwin and his brother, that God will bless them in this new age. God will cause them to move forward. God will prosper them. God will continue to prosper their ministry and their family. God should bless them, bless their family, bless their ministry, cause their ministry to go forward, cause their ministry to be prosperous in the name of Jesus. Let's pray for them. Gaba Zandele Kaya Baba. Hey, Gabe Zandel Kaya. Hey, Mazandele Kaya Baba. Le Kaya. Hey, Mazaka. Le Bagabe. Galumbaza. Hey, Gaba Kala. Lord, prosper your children. Prosper your ministers. Prosper your servant. Prosper them, O God, in this new age. Oh Lord, it's a jubilee here. It's a year of jubilee. It's a year of deliverance. It's a year of liberty. Lord, Lord, we pray. Let that spirit of liberty fall upon them. It's a year of rest. Lord, give them rest. Give them rest, O Lord, in every area. In the name of Jesus. Lord, prosper their work, O God. Prosper their ministry. Prosper their family. Prosper them, O God, in the name of Jesus. Cause them, O God, to move forward. Cause them to become great. Cause them to work strong upon the land. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, that nothing, oh God, will be able to stand before them. Expand them, oh God. Lord, increase them, oh God. Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your servants that you have called. You are indeed called them for a purpose. A lot throughout the years, from the day that they came onto this earth, Lord, you've been with them. You have guided them. You have directed them. You have led them through ups and down. Lord, even in ministry work, Lord, you have shown yourself strong on their behalf. We pray, O oh God, as the 1050, O oh God, we pray, let there be abundant grace upon Amen. their life. Let your favor come upon them. Amen. Let your mercy be made available unto them. Amen. Lord, we pray that everything that they sow mm. in ministry cause it to prosper. Amen. Cause the work of their hands to prosper. Amen. Cause their ministry to prosper. Amen. Lord, make them strong. Amen. Cause them to work strong. Amen. Make them great, O oh God, Amen. upon the land. Yes, Help them to attach life, O God. Mm. Touch nations. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let them continue to be a blessing. Amen. Lord, upon the people of God. Amen. Upon the kingdom. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray, O God, that no man, no evil man, mm. will be able to stand against yeah. them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
Let's take our tithe quickly. Take your seat. We'll take our tithe quickly. And we take our tithe. Today is going to be Kofi and Amma. We should have done that one last week. We didn't do it. So this time we'll do it in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you are a covenant-keeping God. And whatever you say you will do, you will surely do it. You have said in your word that when we bring one tenth of the blessing, you will open the windows of heaven and you will pour out blessing unto us. Lord, this hour, your children are standing before this altar. And they brought one tenth of that blessing. We pray, O oh God, let your word come to pass in their life. Open the windows of heaven. Let rains, dews of heaven, blessings from heaven come upon them. In the name of Jesus. We declare, O oh God, that with this tithe that they are brought, we pray that their seed, Lord, will not be devoured before the harvest. Every seed they sow, Lord, shall germinate and bring great harvest. In the name of Jesus, we declare that nothing will die in their hand. Even if the devil has stolen anything from them, we pray, O oh God, let the devil restore sevenfold. In the name of Jesus, bless them, O God. Bless their family. Restore their health. Preserve their life. Lord, take them far away from evil. That evil will not come near their dwelling. In the name of Jesus, we declare it and so shall it be. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take our offering. We are taking our offering quickly. Shall we take our monies? Give. The Bible says, Give and shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together. Running over shall men give unto your bosom. Shall we rise on our feet? And let's give unto God. Ushers.
awesome God, awesome God, mighty God, mighty God, awesome God, awesome God, mighty God, mighty God. We give you praise, we give you praise, awesome God. Thanksgiving offering here. Uh, this is from Mrs. Matrice Nutape. He said, Thanking God for blessing me with another year. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to you, Mrs. Matrice Nutape. And then we have, I'm thanking God for adding another year to my years. May his name be praised. And this one is from our brother Joseph K. Nyamiche. Uh, praise God. Shall we have Mr. Nyamiche on his feet? Uh, Mrs. Matrice, is she in? Is she in? Oh, it's be, on, be on your feet. Be on your feet. Uh, let's stand in the name of Jesus. Uh, it's a blessing, it's a gift of life you know, for another year to come around to you. It's a blessing. And this morning, I want us, let's, whatever you are, just stretch your hands. You can stretch the two hands towards them. They are two. Uh, but it's just a symbol, symbolic, and whatever they are, the hand of God is stretched upon them. We are praying for God's protection for them and their family. That God will preserve their life. That this new year will be a year of turnaround. Will be a year where God will show himself strong on their behalf. That God will take them from every trap of the devil. That no evil shall come near their dwelling. That God himself will watch over them. Protect their going out and their coming in. That whatever they do, God will bless them. In the name of Jesus, we Amen. declare over your life and that of your family that your life is preserved. In the name of Jesus, Amen. the Lord preserve your life. The Lord preserve the life of your family. In the name of Jesus, every trap that is set before you because of the fire of God that will consume before you and consume after you. Every trap is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You are blessed. Praise God. As we declare it, so shall it be. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we'll take. First one is what? Monday. Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Amen. In fact, we should have done this. Is it last two weeks? Last week, yeah, but uh, we couldn't do that. So, uh, just look at where you belong. Amen. Shall we be on our feet? Uh, those who have money and they want to support their, their group, 
So you just walk in, look at the basket the day you were born, and just walk there and drop your money. Amen. Just let's move from anywhere. Just come. Let's come. Awesome God. Awesome God. Mighty God.
And then um, there's a possible tie somewhere. But if there's tie, we have to break it. But we'll still uh, take money, those who took the books. As we said last week, um, it's not an offering. But Daddy gave the book to almost everybody. And we didn't write anybody's name. But if you know you took the book, you can decide. One is 15 cities. If you took Sometimes it's, it's, it's good to uh, give. Uh, when you are giving, don't say, hey, it's too much. In the kingdom of God, we give a lot. Amen. And that's one thing I like about Church of Pentecost. They don't go sourcing money from anywhere. They pick the money from within. And then they will build the house of God. They won't solicit money from anywhere. It's affordable. And sometimes the offering can be three, four, five. Offering for this, offering for that, offering for that. Amen. But once you are giving to God, be assured that you will be blessed. Amen. The Bible says, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. If you don't sow, you don't reap. If you don't give, you don't receive. Amen. It's a principle in the house of God. The more you give, the more you receive. The more you hold, the more you lose. Amen. And let's hear the results. Wow. A Saturday has 275.
prayers uh, briefly. Let's invite our sister. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please let's make air for the following announcement. We want to see you by hands. If today is the first time you are fellowshipping with us, we want to welcome you. Please let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate him. Those around, let's help welcome him. Those around, let's help welcome them. So this is Up City Church International, and we are happy that you came to fellowship with us today. And we want to have interaction with you. We want to get to know you. So we we'll ask that you pick your Bible, your pen, your notebook, and every other thing you came with. See the gentleman at the entrance. He will speak to you shortly. God bless you. Please let's appreciate them. Midweek service. There's going to be midweek service this Wednesday. We are all encouraged to be there as we pray to strengthen our faith. Amen. And it starts from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Generation David. Generation David. So Generation David is a youth wing of this church. And we are calling on all you to come this Friday as we discuss the topic, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit by our very own brother, Fifi Spencer. Let's all make it a point to be there. Amen. Amen. Agape meeting. There will be a marriage seminar for all couples on Sunday, 24 July, 2022, after church service. And the topic is, my marriage, my sacrifice. And the speaker is, Reverend Dr. Alex Anson. So let's take notes. 24 July, we'll be having a seminar. Amen. Welfare dues. The welfare table is at the entrance of the auditorium, and we are all encouraged to make payments of our dues, and we shouldn't forget our booklets. Amen. Sanctify ladies. Sanctify ladies. So we are all being reminded that this San, um, I mean, 31st July 2022, after church service, we are going to meet as we learn about the beauty and decor. So, um, you say you can in man or more Sunday, 31st July 2022. You be na you na you hear decorations. Amen. In Tien Shenenson. Amen. Prayer warriors. Prayer warriors are meeting after church service. Amen. So, if you are here and you are not in any department, we are encouraged to join prayer warriors as we pray for the church. Amen. Let's have a fruitful week. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God so much. Um, in five minutes, we are going to pray for missions. In five minutes. And uh, I could really relate to all that Doc was saying today. Um, yesterday, I was on the mission field with um, Mrs. Ado, Ms. Quartin. We joined Apostle. And we really need people on the ground. Hallelujah. There were many people to be spoken to, but were few. And within some few time, it was evening. So, we really need people on the ground. Hallelujah. And we want to pray the scripture that God gave us. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous. But the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. 
We want to pray. We want to pray with compassion. When I went to pick the people this morning, one of them told me that, look, she told me, a 22-year-old lady, just this morning, said she has been looking for somebody just to share something on her heart so that from 2018, she has not been in church, but after sharing that, she wants to come to church. And we really need laborers on the field. Hallelujah. If you join me to be your feet, we are praying, let laborers, let this be a passion in our hearts. Let us have time. It's 11.08. In five minutes, I'll be stopping you. I want to pray in the name of Jesus. Iradi ma'asuma fo embra. Iradi masa pashi enshe yakumim. Let compassion fill our heart that we'll be able to do this job in the name of Jesus. Let us give an offering of sacrifice, our prayers in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray. Thank you for your word that we have heard today. Thank you, O oh Lord, for opportunity to minister, O oh God, your word. Thank you for calling us into your vineyard. First of all, I pray, O oh God, that more and more I'll be a laborer, O oh God, in your vineyard. In the name of Jesus. And now I join the saints to pray. We pray and ask for laborers in the vineyard in the name of Jesus. People who will be there. People who will be willing to hear. People who will save others in the name of Jesus that the kingdom of hell will be depopulated as the kingdom of heaven is populated in the name of Jesus we pray oh God laborers that will move into homes laborers at the workplace laborers in the market laborers in the station laborers everywhere in the name of Jesus make out of us oh God laborers Labado, shantete librado, ragada bababa. For this cause you have called us, O God. Many have forgotten, many have lost focus. But we pray, O God, bring us back. Makade, velihata, taliadosh. And we pray, O God, hayabado, shabada bababa. That the labor will be fruitful in the name of Jesus. We pray that the labor will be fruitful. Laborers at the workplace. Laborers in the schools, laborers at the market, Allah regeti satatata lavalusha makado reba papa papa. Many are dying, many need others' shoulders to cry on. Father, we are available. Lere atata beikede valowadosha para papa papa papa. We pray that laborers will be made out of the children's service. Laborers will be made out of the sanctified ladies. Laborers will be made out of generation David may laborers be made out of agape laborers everywhere oh God Lara Papa at the fitting shop laborers in the name of Jesus Ligrado Shepada Papa in government laborers oh God in the name of Jesus if you called some of us and we are forgotten oh remind us Holy Ghost not only us but we pray for all churches in Ghana you have instructed us to pray that laborers may laborers be sent we pray oh Lord we put on our priestly garment and we say let laborers we are in the last days you have said to us we pray that in this last days oh mighty laborers will come out labrado bayama kudibidiapa laborers who have compassion hayake lebrado bobobo let your compassion fill our heart rake tadabadoshe labradababa we do not ask for money we ask that laborers will come arababababo rebababa we do not ask for ourselves but we ask so God that laborers will come to bring hope ah yabado shabadaba to bring oh God your grace librado shabadababa iantadabalo ebradabababa rabababo rebayababo rabababo rebelibradababa oh laborers 
Oh, Libres, Labrada Bababam, for the harvest truly is plenteous. Pale Libres are few, God. We pray that in this time, Libres will come out. Libres will come out of us. Ali Grado Shabada Baba, Ian Tada Babo, who carry the very words that will comfort hearts, the very words that will bring salvation, salvation to our homes, salvation beyond. In the name of Jesus, Li Grado Bayababa, into the villages into the towns everywhere that this gospel will be preached the light will come out for you have said that we are the salt oh we pray that let us give flavor in the name of Jesus and let this work be backed with results thank you father oh lord we thank you and we give you praise for these words in Jesus name amen Please, on Saturdays, we meet here. If you come here by 2, we'll be praying up to 4 o'clock. Then 4 o'clock, we'll join Apostle Na for missions. God bless you. Amen. Let's, let's keep standing. I will take the benediction. But next week, just call somebody who has not been coming to church. Let's call and invite people to church. Amen. And God will richly bless you. Shall we take the benediction? Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think of, according to the power that works in us, may that God bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May that same God lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. That God should cause you to recover your compassion for the things of God. Your compassion for souls. May the Lord cause you to recover your passion for the kingdom work. May the Lord cause you to recover your hunger for the Holy Spirit. That throughout the week, may the Spirit of God fill your heart. May the, may the Pentecost fire invade your life. May the Lord cause you to walk in the supernatural. May the Lord cause you to speak to somebody. May the Lord cause you to preach to somebody. May the Lord cause you to invite somebody. In the name of Jesus. May God dispatch his innumerable company of angels. May they take charge over you. May they escort you. May they watch over you. And take you away from any terrorist attack. From any evil. From any trap. From any disaster. May the Lord keep you far away from disaster. And your family. Your property. Your business. Your investment your finances may the lord preserve all in the name of jesus go in the name of the lord in jesus name amen great grace great grace great grace Amen. I just forgot the. Please, we are registering people for the Bible school. So please, if you are here, you have not attended the Bible school, please, you can enroll. Uh, you don't need to uh, be a pastor or aspiring to become a pastor before you attend the Bible school. It's a biblical knowledge that you need so that it will help you as a Christian. So please. If you are interested, see Pastor Kwashi or Pastor Kwe, and then pick a form and register. By August, we are starting. So please enroll. Don't just pass through the church. Let the church pass through you. God bless you. Amen. Have a nice day.